Alright, today we're going to be using the clone tool to get rid of things in the picture. Take a look at the top of this photograph. You've got a hand which is just pointing downwards for no good reason, so let's get rid of it. If we come to the clone tool, which is here in the tools palette, basic way you use it is click Alt to find an area of the screen that you want copying, in this case here, and then the next place you click will start to pick up part of the screen and stamp it down somewhere else. And there you go. Let's take a look at the underlying layer, the original, the new one. That's it with the clone tool, but there's more to it than that. Let's try and remove not just the hand, but the entire adult from this picture. Now, in order to do that, we need to combine the clone tool with the selection tools. All right, first thing to do, zoom in on this boy here because you can see around the border here, this is the bit we need to try and protect. When we do get rid of the grown up, we don't get rid of the little boy as well. So let's come to paint selection tool and we'll start to paint out the shape of the little boy's head. Once you've got a border that you like, like I have there, let go, press down shift and then make extra selections on top. If you spend too long, selecting certain areas, you'll end up selecting more than you bargained for. So let's keep it going around. Make sure we've got the ear selected as well. Down around the chin. This area should be fairly straightforward because it's a nice different colour or different tone to what's bordering it. All right, I've got most of my outline selected. A little bit down here as well. Now I'm going to come to my lasso tool, hold down shift, and I'm just going to trace all around the inside. No need to do anything around here. This isn't really joining on to the area we want to clone out. But press down shift, get rid of a little bit more. In fact, we can just take this whole part here around the outside. Now only there, a little bit at the bottom, take this, down here, here, a little bit on the edge of the bike, there. Then we come to quick mask, see what we can do with this. Now, if you're going to concentrate on anything, concentrate on the area around the boy's head, because people look at heads and faces before they look at anything else. Yeah. Take a look around the bottom of this ear here. Bit I need to do with that. So come to our paintbrush tool. Here we've got black selected. We want that to be smaller. Come on down you come. And we're drawing a little bit there. Don't be afraid to go over it a little bit. And then when we come to white, we can just come back in and paint out that area so we get a nice sharp line there. Quickly hold down your space bar and drag the image around. Yeah, we need a little bit more there. Selecting things and making masks takes time. There's no other way around it. But the more you do it, the more of a feel you get for it. And also, the more time you spend with it at this stage, the better result you're going to get. All right, I do believe we are just about ready. So, zoom to fit. Come out of quick mass mode by pressing Q. Now that we've made all our selections, now I want to zoom in a little bit more, once more. And finally, I want to come to Edit refine selection because I want to feather my mask a little bit so I don't get too hard an edge. Okay, I've got mine about 14% there and click on OK. Now we're ready to start cloning. So come to a zoom to fit and we select a clone tool. Now the brush you choose is going to be important. Let's drag the brush up here. By and large, I prefer to use a fairly hard edged brush. 
A lot of people think, well, use the softest edge brush you can find. But if you do that, you tend to end up with slightly blurred and blotchy kind of areas. So use a hard brush to start off with, then go on to the softer brush as and when you need it. Oh, one thing we should do before we start as well is edit invert selection. So now the little boy is protected, but everywhere outside of it will be affected. So come back to a brush size. I've got that about set about 175. Hold down my Alt key, pick up an area and start. <laughs> Well, I made a mistake there, and that is a good point. Control Z to erase that. If you take a look up here for my brush, I've got kind of a scatter brush setting. Really don't want that. I want a simple brush line. Try that one there, 25. Make that a little bit larger. Still hard edge, but now it's not throwing random bits all over the place. And I start to... I'm resting one of my fingers over the Alt button because I want to select from different areas. Gradually take out the grown up. Now, this light area here, if I wanted to keep that, in that case, I would use a softer area. And what I would do is I press down Alt and go down the line where the light meets the dark and start to stamp things down like that. But I don't want to do that too much because there's just really not enough of this light area for me to use to go all the way down here. Instead, what I'll do, click on Alt, and I'll start to lose it. This is where using the soft edge becomes more useful. So I'm gradually building the soft area there. Now that dark area there against the light doesn't really work, so I make my brush size a bit smaller, more precise control. Find a slightly lighter area of green, that'll do. And put that down there. Make it a little bit more natural. All right, back to my harder edge brush. Let's make it nice and large. Hit Alt, carry on, losing the grown-up. One thing to be careful when you're doing this as well is to watch out for repeating patterns. Now watch what happens when I get down to the baby because we've mashed him out. He's not affected, which is very useful. Carry on here, getting rid of the grown-up. Because I'm using a hard edge brush, like I mentioned, you're not getting blotchy areas all over the place. Now, something to look out for here. Can I see any evidence of it? Yeah. Take a look at this. Well, let's get my cursor so I can point. That bit there is repeated there. Maybe a little bit there. So I've got to get rid of some of that. You want to watch out for repeating areas. Now, what I mean by that is if you find a distinctive area like that and you start stamping it down several times, you'll start to see a repeating pattern which you wouldn't get in nature. So be aware of that. Come back to the clone tool. Let's choose a slightly softer edge brush for this. And pick an area here. And do that. Now, see there. See this little, it looks like little nuts. They're being repeated in different areas. It doesn't look too bad, but I don't want them repeated too often, otherwise it gives the game away as to what you've been doing. So down here, you've got a couple of them here. Get rid of those. Down here as well. Okay, last little bit we've got to do, the leg. It's got a grassy area there. Okay, I can't really use the leaves. So, well, what about, we've got some grass around here. Click on Alt and start to get rid of it. If I go too far, I might end up getting part of this tire, so don't forget to reset your position by holding down Alt and clicking on certain areas. I'm going to choose some of this here, start to take out this boot here. Sorry, trainer. Mm. See what's happening there? If you zoom in right in, I'm actually I'm getting ready to start zooming in and stamping down the edge of the picture. You see that hard edge just towards the left of my tool. So I'll do that. Take that out. This area here illustrates an important point. You know what you've been doing here. You know that you've been cloning and stamping, you naughty person, fudging your images. A person looking at this will be looking 
at the faces. They will not be looking at the leaf down here saying, oh, I think I can see some evidence of some cloning down there. I put it to you, if you just tidy it up just a little bit, someone looking at this picture will never notice that that leaf starts off soft and then gradually kind of disappears off into the distance. Or this leaf down here doesn't have quite the hard edge it should. Let's come to zoom to fit. And let's deselect. It's very difficult to tell from this, apart from one or two repetitions here of those nuts. It's very difficult to tell that this has been cloned. I would leave it at that. You can go back in and spend a lot more time on it if you want. But if you compare what we've actually done, let's make this layer invisible. Complete grown up. No grown up whatsoever. You can see just how powerful the clone tool is. Just follow the basic tips in this tutorial. You should have no problems with it. And you can airbrush out anybody you don't want or don't like. Won't that be fun? I hope you got something out of this video. If you did, maybe you consider clicking on one of the links below and check out my game called Disco Baby, which is on the iTunes store or Android stores like Google Play. It has three different games in it, a memory game, a maths game for children, and a dance along with me game for toddlers to join in with. Thanks for your time. Fire!